Mad. A, mad, a mad a mad person a mad man yes i get angry so. angry man uh so on the video i am wearing the seattle mariners hat uh because that won our our vote in discord against the kingsbury park district hat so the uh the hat moves on to face the number one seed in its next round the dtns hat uh, but I will not be wearing this hat during the main show because it's solstice and the holidays. Oh, so I feel like I got to wear the Santa hat. That's right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there goes Sarah. She is really offended by this Santa hat. She just got stay. it in the left. Stay, Tom. Stay. <laughs> you, you, Sarah. <laughs> you sit down there, you. <laughs> Think about what you did. <laughs> Drop it. Drop <laughs> it. <laughs> That's what you should do, like on the show. If you want us to, instead of the music, you know, on you know, to play off, play people off. You go, drop mm -hmm. it. Drop <laughs> it. We get to, we get time to move on. <laughs> yes. Drop. Drop. No. Drop. <laughs> drop it. <laughs> Ray. Drop. <laughs> Otis. Drop. It's definitely the uh, the refrain at when they come in from the yard because Ray's always trying to sneak her toys from the backyard in, and I try to keep the backyard toys in the backyard because they're all dirty, right. and then the toys inside stay inside. Yeah. <laughs> Biocast is going to edit the script he wrote for us to say instead of rap drop. <laughs> Oh, that's in Discord. I'm on the chat. That's why I'm missing all this stuff. Sorry. You open Discord too. Yeah, no, dis Discord's hopping today. Yeah, I'll open them both. There's a yeah, IRC's hopping too, as always though. Nothing unusual about that. Happy Christmas, Silent Hawk! Thanks for popping in and saying hello. It's very nice. <laughs> Happy Christmas! Why do we say Merry Christmas? As usual, but not happy Christmas. Well, uh, the, the Brits say happy Christmas. Yeah. I mean, they mean the same thing. Yeah. My Joyful we're, Christmas. We're just kind of old fashioned here in the US. We, we like those old, oldie ways of talking, like be merry. Oldie with well, the Well, and you don't really say be merry about anything else besides Christmas. It's very old fashioned. Yeah. Merry yeah. New Year. Merry birthday. Merry birthday. Yeah, I was going to say Merry, <laughs> Merry Turkey Day. <clears throat> Happy Saturday. Merry <laughs> retirement. You know, I, I try to weigh myself twice a week now to, to keep track of, you know, how I'm, how I'm doing on eating and exercising. And the way I remember what days is I call it weights day and fatter day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. So I know Wednesday and Saturday are the days I would check. I've given up. I've given up. I've kind of plateaued. You lost yeah. the battle of the bulge, as they say. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not in any way, you know, you know, but I just I'm not losing any weight, so I'm I'm okay. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, as long as you're stable and healthy, yeah. that's all that matters. That's what you all ready to do a show. Let's do it. I think so. Okay. Uh, oh, I didn't. Uh... <coughs> I want to change the opening. Give me one second. I want to, I've been I'm, customizing them all week. So. The Discord channel yeah. is general, right? That's what I want to be in. Uh, yes, that's where everybody okay. is. Okay, I'm. I'm in it. <sighs> you ready, Oat? Yeah, he says. <laughs> so pumped. All right. If Otis is ready, I'm ready. Here we go. Wake up my iPad in three, two, one. Brian Brushwood has supported independent tech news directly for almost five years. Thanks, Wood. Be like Brian. Become a DTNS member at patreon.com slash DTNS. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, December 21st, Solstice 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. From my hidey hole in Cleveland, Ohio, I'm Len Peralta. And uh, from L.A. County, I'm the show's producer, Roger J. 
Ah, it's good to have Len back. We missed you. It's we good to be it. back here for Yay. the what is the final show of uh, of the year? Correct. It yeah, is. final live show of the year. Uh, if anyone's unfamiliar, over the holiday break, we'll have four special episodes: a prediction show, a predictions results show, where we look at our predictions from last year, a uh, listener co-host show, where we talk to some of the listeners in the audience about their technology experiences, and a retro show, the daily tech news from 1992. Nice. Uh, that's all coming your way next week. Erin Carson was supposed to be on the show today, uh, but unfortunately she took ill. So we wish her well. Hope she gets a, a speedy recovery and we'll get her back on the show in the new year. But are y'all ready? I'm all ready for this. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. China has resumed approving new video games for sale after a nine-month freeze. A new batch of games has been reviewed and will soon receive licenses for domestic publication. A new body has been created as well to review ethical issues. As China says, it wants to combat childhood myopia and online addiction. Tencent announced back in October it will use facial recognition to detect minors playing games and then enforce mandatory limits. The U.S. FBI seized domains of 15 high-profile denial-of-service websites Thursday after an operation involving the U.K.'s National Crime Agency, the Dutch National Police, and cooperation from Cloudflare, Flashpoint, and Google. The orders were granted under federal seizure laws against sites that are booter or stressor sites. They, they basically provide denial-of-service as a service. Matthew Gittrell and Juan Martinez in California and David Bukowski in Alaska have been charged with operating the sites. Microsoft announced it will stop selling its Xbox All Access subscriptions on December 31st of this year, just a few days from now. The subscription gives users an Xbox One and access to more than 100 games for $21.99 per month. An Xbox spokesperson named Larry Herb says that the program will expand when it returns in 2019. Uh, good old Major Nelson. Uh, finally, Gatwick Airport in the UK reopened for flights, finally, after being closed most of Thursday. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. Drone flights from an unidentified individual uh, were endangering takeoff and landing. The operator of the drones has not been found last we knew. Uh, but the military says it has taken mitigating measures and the drones have not reappeared since Thursday night. Police attempting to track the drone signal suggested the operator was moving around, possibly in a vehicle like a van. Sussex Assistant Chief Constable Steve Barry told the BBC there were a number of lines of inquiry, including the possibility of environmental activists. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little more about, uh, speaking of follow-up, following up on Gatwick, let's follow up, uh, sadly, on the glitter bomb story. Okay, we talked about this the other day, and we were all quite, quite, quite fond of this hack. It turns out, it might not be as, as, as hackable as, as we uh, originally thought. The glitter bomb package to catch thieves may not have as been as pure as experiment as some of you may have hoped, and here's why. Someone named Peter Logan is among the people who did some sleuthing, and Mr. Logan notified BuzzFeed that after investigating sources like Zillow and Google Street View, it looked as if some of the instances in the video seemed to have been done by people next door to each other. Now, Thursday, Mark Rober removed 1.5 minutes from the video that he posted initially that we talked about on the show because of the doubts around two of the five reactions. He then explained that he'd reached out to the volunteers who would compensate for their troubles and a friend of a friend appeared to have used their acquaintances to stage the videos. But as far as he and you know, the other three are totally legit thieves. So uh, still 60% of the video, uh, legitimate thieves, as far as we know, a lot of people are just saying, oh, it was all faked. Uh, and maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe it was, uh, maybe he's it lying to you embellished, and trying to get away with it. It really mean it's fake to begin with. I don't, I don't see any reason not to believe based on his explanation that he said, Hey, anybody want to help me with this? Put the package on your porch, uh, and try to track it down for me and help us out, uh, and, and let us know and I'll, I'll compensate you. And a few people said, yeah, we'll do it. And then decided to stage it themselves without his knowledge. And he just didn't pay close enough attention to notice the little details that indicated that you can jump to the conclusion that he did. And it was all a conspiracy if you want, but I could 
absolutely see his explanation playing out in real life and him being sad that he got taken advantage of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, India has authorized 10 central agencies to intercept, monitor, and decrypt data on any computer. Any subscriber, service provider, or person in charge of a computer must extend all facilities and technical assistance to the agencies. Failure to comply is punishable by fines and seven years in prison. The government Ooh. says any order for interception, monitoring, and decryption must be approved by the union home secretary. So this is not something that you could get easily but it is exactly the kind of law that encourages companies to put in back doors if they are worried about not being able to comply with such an order should it come down. Well, I don't know exactly what the fine would be, but seven years in prison is nothing to sniff at. So yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, this is, this is major. Yeah, and well, and it's another backdoor legislation because Australia uh, also is is putting in place a law that says you have to comply if we ask you to see uh, the data. You have to be able to decrypt it. What what's going on in both these cases is they are not requiring a backdoor. They're not making legislation that says build a backdoor in. They're one step removed, saying you're going to have to decrypt it if we ask you. How you are prepared to do that? That's up to you. Probably the only way to be able to do that is to either provide the key yourself and store them or provide a back door. And when you provide the key yourself, uh, that is less secure. Uh, and that's why Signal, WhatsApp, et cetera, don't do that because they want you to have the most secure communications possible and have no way that anyone else but you could see your messages. However, when you do that, you're not able to decrypt communications. So uh, a lot of people are worried that this is another example of, of the creeping legislation that hobbles cryptography. Okay, so we're in India. What do we use? Uh, well, I, I mean, right now you use WhatsApp. They, you know, they haven't changed anything. It'll be interesting to see if companies decide uh, to change how they operate or not operate in India. I, I haven't seen a, a response from WhatsApp yet. Uh, the ball's sort of yeah. in their court. Well, moving on to Apple News, the company announced that its head of machine learning and AI strategy, John Giandria, has been promoted to senior vice president and added to Apple's executive team. Giandria joined Apple back in April, oversees Siri, which some folks believe has improved since he took over. <laughs> Depends on who you ask, I suppose. Loop Ventures published results of tests this week between Google Assistant and Siri and Amazon and Cortana. All four understood queries more than 99% of the time, with Google getting 100% of the time. Google also answered correctly 87% of the time, and Siri was number two at 74.6%, followed by Amazon, 72.5%. And then Cortana, back down at 63.4%. Siri improved the most, though. And that's that's significant because everybody likes to poo-poo Siri as, as being an assistant that isn't that great. Uh, she improved the most over the past year, up 22 points. Although uh, Loop points out that a lot of the improvement from Siri uh, related to just having more domains available. Uh, so there were fewer times where it just kicked you over to web uh, searches. Uh. And okay. Amazon seemed to have the greatest information-related uh, improvement. Even though Amazon wasn't as good in the other situations, if you if you go to that loop story and you look down uh, at the graph, you'll you'll see that when it comes to information-related stuff, uh, Amazon was ninety-one percent to Google's ninety-four percent. So number two, uh, they fall off on local searches, commerce searches and command searches. That's actually, command searches are one of the things Siri's the best at because it's so well integrated into your phone, you can tell it to launch things and do things and, and it's better than all the other platforms. And I wonder, you know, how many of these searches are um, uh, focused on directions, for example. I mean, that would that's be the, the local the search. Yeah, like that's the Although only we're thing about that speakers. I use any assistance for, at least when I'm in my car. And you, know, I was say, you do that on a phone. These are speakers, and they, they actually test phones differently from the speakers. Uh, I see. Okay. 
So the local stuff, I mean, you could be asking directions uh, from your from your smart speaker, but you're less likely yeah, to do that. From, in from here, before I leave my house type thing. But yeah, okay. I asked uh, my Echo for local coffee shops because that's one of the, the questions they show in this Loop article. Uh, where is the nearest coffee shop is one of the, it's the example question for the local category. Uh, it gave me five coffee shops near my old house. So that was interesting because it's getting a zip code out of my Amazon Echo profile. It's not getting it from my Amazon.com shopping profile, or it would know where I am. Uh, because you've updated it. Yeah, because then. I've updated my shipping address. So but the if two I of them order, are talking to each other. If I order something from the Echo, it comes to me at my new address. But when I asked for local coffee shops, it gave me a coffee shops in my old zip code. Uh, so on the one hand, I was pleased because it means that it is waiting for me to give it approval for that function to be able to know where I am. Right. Uh, on the other hand, I was like, yeah, the, none of those coffee shops are actually near me. So, But it also, I mean, I think it's probably the right thing on the company's part to be like, well, your mailing address might not be the, your home address. Sure. It yeah. mostly is, but not mm -hmm. for everybody. Not always. Uh, and it wasn't trying to guess by IP address where I was either. It wasn't, wasn't creeping on me like that. Security researcher Mossab H discovered that anonymous social network blind did not password protect one of its databases, exposing user account information. Uh, in other words, you didn't have to crack a password because there wasn't one. The database included private messaging data for users who signed up or logged in between November 1st and December 19th. And remember, blind is supposed to be anonymous messages. It's for whistleblowers. It's for complainers. Uh, and these messages were in the clear if you knew where to look for them. Blind executive Kim Kim, however, says there's no evidence the database was misappropriated or misused. Uh, this has become a place for employees of Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Twitter, Uber, uh, to talk about what's going on in their company. And whistleblowers used it to reveal allegations of sexual harassment at Uber, uh, if you remember a couple of years ago. They they were using Blind for that. I have seen some schadenfreude, Sarah, in the press where some say, ha ha, these tech people are getting a taste of their own medicine with their anonymous data being revealed. Well, okay. Um I actually, full disclosure, I had not heard of Blind before the story, um, but I don't work at any of these companies. So, okay, um, perhaps it's, you know, it's sort of an enterprise kind of gossipy behind the scenes type thing. Listen, uh, w w no matter if it's, you know, Tom and Roger and I talking amongst ourselves or people talking amongst themselves at a company, if it promises security and is not secure, this is a huge problem. I, I, you know, we, we go through this every day. It seems like we're talking about another, uh, um, uh, supposedly, uh, uh, very uh, stable app that is not. So <laughs> you are, I don't know, you are, like what, like what's the solution? Like, okay, well, okay. does Apple need to build its own, you know, behind the scenes uh, um, messaging system for its employees to ensure that th this doesn't happen? And then will that be secure? I don't know. The, here's the thing. This is no different than any other breach. It's standard uh, caveat supply. Uh, it may not have been a misappropriated. Uh, it may have been a, a, a bug that that thankfully Mossab H found and no one else and no harm done. Those happen all the time. No code is 100% secure. The way you get 100% secure is have a lot of eyes on it. And if a lot of eyes on it, are on it, they find the bug. And then they disclose the bug because also we live in a world of GDPR and public disclosure. And so since the GDPR, I think it feels like there are more breaches partially because we're hearing about them more often versus previously when they might have been shoveled under the rug. It doesn't mean that the security is as awful as it feels, though, because you're catching them in a lot of cases before bad things are done. But our brains aren't wired to, to differentiate that. So we just remember there were a lot of breaches. Some of them were very bad with malicious people getting information. Some of them weren't. So the solution is to nail down security by having audits, by having open source protocols, by having a lot of eyes on them and having the Masab H's of the world catch them before someone else takes advantage of them. 
Well, since we're on the subject of messaging apps and their security, sources tell Bloomberg that WhatsApp is working on a cryptocurrency to allow money transfers, particularly for the remittances market in India. A stable coin would be pegged to the US dollar. And then WhatsApp is still working on the strategy and plans for assets. So the coin is not near release. Not yet. They're working on it, though. India leads the world in remittances with $69 billion sent home to India in 2017. That's according to the World Bank. Yeah, uh, I, I see this reported everywhere as Facebook wants to make a cryptocurrency, right? Because, whoa, does that not catch the headlines these days? Does that people get angry? What? Now they, they can't even secure their platform against privacy abuse and they're going to make a cryptocurrency? <laughs> but once you read this, it makes perfect sense. In India, where WhatsApp is huge, uh, remittances are huge. Why wouldn't WhatsApp try to figure out a way to handle remittances? And stable coins are a less controversial cryptocurrency for handling things like remittances when they're pegged to the dollar. doesn't mean it's not risky though. And, and that may be why they're far away from putting this out because they're trying to figure out if they can make it work well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a Bitcoin situation. This is a, we want to make the transfer of the money faster than it would be through ACH. So let's create a cryptocurrency that we control and validate to speed it up. It's uh, it's definitely a, it's definitely a gamble because you, you, you're, you're betting that people are willing to use that service over something they know and have used for years. I, I don't know though. I mean, if, if WhatsApp does this right, you won't even know there's a stable coin. You won't be buying stable coins. It'll just use the coin as the transactional element to move the money from one place to another. You'll just I, say, oh, I'm sending rupees home. Yeah, I, you know, you know, that's, you know, remittances are huge, right? That's a, a lot of countries make money is by their citizens working overseas and they, you know, send a portion of it back to their family uh, that still remain in the country and they spend and uh, uh, boost the local economy. But, I mean, possibly. I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things like people get kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of conservative when you deal with finances and money, and they tend to stick with what they know. It, well, I, it, again, and maybe I'm misinterpreting this, but because it's a, it's a, it's using a blockchain and a coin, I think it causes us to lose our heads a little. If all they're doing is on the back end using that as the token counter, so they they can have an accurate. Uh, accounting of what's being sent where on our end as a WhatsApp user, it'll just be, do you want to send this much money to this person here? Press this button. Boom. It's done. Right. And, and if people are willing to do that on WhatsApp, I don't know that the stable coin part of it really matters. Uh, you know, time will tell. Yeah. Time will tell. Well, we've got one more top story for 2018 to do. And I, I think we should let Roger do the honors. Sarah, what do you think? I think that's a great idea. Roger. Take yes. it away. I will take it away. Walmart received a patent for a listening system designed for capturing and analyzing sounds in a shopping facility. The system will also, quote, capture audio of conversations between guests and an employee station at the terminal and, quote, process the audio of the conversation to determine whether the employee stationed at the terminal is greeting guests. Now, currently, the company has no plans for the system. Uh, or its deployment, but The Verge suggests that it could be used as a, uh, a, a loss prevention, theft, uh, anti-theft system, yeah. or or a way to well, monitor or a way to fire people when you know that they didn't do a good all job. All right, all right, but it's also exactly what Amazon Go does in their shopping, uh, in their instant shopping thing. And, and I don't have a problem with that either. That. I don't I, have a problem with that. I'm more I'm more curious about the whole uh we're gonna listen to our employees interact with the customers. Yeah. Like, oh, what if you said like you know, you shouldn't buy that, you should buy this, you're gonna get five bucks off. Well, okay, the, but, but but like okay, think of it from yeah, sort of the the a, a different perspective. For example, let's say I go to Walmart, I buy something, I have a very negative shopping experience. Is it my fault? Is it the employee's fault? I don't know. Maybe somebody had a bad day. Maybe maybe it's clear whose fault it is. But I, you know, then complete a survey later uh, bashing that employee. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was. So if a company were to be able to say, well, we actually listened to the, the exchange in question 
and the 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 the, the, um, the the employee was in the right. The customer was kind of you know out to lunch. Then I'm not saying this is necessarily a good thing, but it would probably um, okay. It's better data for the company. This is a patent, first of all. Patents are written as widely applicable as possible. So the, the use cases in patents are n almost never the use cases in, in reality in its use, right? They, they want to make sure they cover any use of their patent and make it look particularly useful. The other thing is all the worries that, that are being expressed, are you could just put microphones up and do exactly the same thing, right? Like you don't need a patent to do that. It's the, you can't patent putting microphones up and recording it digitally and analyzing them. Right. The patent is about like being able to distinguish what's going on on the floor. And that feels a lot more to me like Walmart wanting to get in on Amazon's business of automated shopping. Uh, de definitely. I could also be, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, like you said, it's a broad based technology. Like I still have fantasies of them expanding it, so I can just kind of yell at the stores, like, "Where's my shampoo?" <laughs> right? See, yeah, no, that'd be because so because like, every time of it. I, I will say I haven't actually never been into a Walmart until I had kids when they started needing like shampoo and bubble bath for for the for, for my daughter. Like I ask, and it's hard to find someone who isn't busy, and it's it's hard to find someone who can direct me directly toward where it's at, depending on what the product is. And if I could just yell at the store and it would just say, okay, it's over here. Now they have, they, they have apps and I know stores like Home Depot and Lowe's will often tell you, okay, you can find this item in this bin. We say we have four left, you know, and you go and there's nothing there. Uh, you still need to track down someone. I, you know, if they could automate the process so you could also ask things, I think that's one of the things that, yeah. Think, uh, about the Amazon system. So That's a patent to be yeah. able to distinguish multiple people asking questions, process what they mean. And then you could, this is not in this patent, but target audio broadcast back. Cause you can broadcast audio to a spot, right? And say, broadcast it back to the person who asked with their answer. So Roger's asking where the shampoo is and the store tells him oh, it's an aisle six. Whereas someone else, a couple of aisles over asked a different question and got a different answer targeted back at them. Where's my kid? Where's my kid? <laughs> She's in aisle six as well. Uh, to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. Time to check our mailbag. Let's do it. Amos wrote in and said, a while ago, I wrote in to express my concerns that the Apple Watch Series 3 was especially sensitive to my wrist tattoo, locking when it shouldn't, and when my Series 0 wouldn't lock at all. That behavior continued for the year I wrote the Series 3. Three. Well, I'm happy to report that the Series 4 has performed perfectly since receiving it last week. Not a single errant lock. Oh, huh. well, that's good yeah. to know. So yeah. the Series 4 actually uh, improved the, the tattoo reading, I guess. <laughs> Was it in the app developer notes? Yeah. Pro probably not. It'll work for Amos. But hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, also got this email in regards to bent iPads. It's absurd to say that's not going to impact the use of the device. Ever tried to cut on a cutting board that's not flat? Likewise, a bent iPad will wobble when you try to type on a screen with the iPad flat on a table. If the bend is always concave on the back and the four corners are always in the same plane, only then would it not wobble. Signed, a self-avowed Apple fangirl. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Um, as much as, yeah, it, it doesn't ruin the device. And, you know, I'm also the same person who complains about uh, uh, Face ID all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the, if it doesn't work seamlessly with your life, it's a problem. Sure. And it and, might and, work fine, but it's still, you know, you 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 point out a couple of use cases where it's like that, that would actually be a problem. Well, because what Apple's saying is it doesn't affect the internal electronics, right? Uh, oh, your iPad will work just fine, but the form factor is part of the operation of it, which is what our Apple fan grill is pointing out here. Correct. Finally, we got a, an email from uh, Prof Metcalf, who was following the Amazon sends data to the wrong person story we talked about the other day, uh, with a combination of curiosity and bewilderment, as were we all. As a human who codes algorithms, Prof says, I'm amazed that people make the assumption that human error rules out the probability that some coder 
just totally screwed something up. I mean, is there no such thing as a non-human error with code? Is hmm. there? Love the show. He also says, everybody be like me and support independent tech news. DTNS is made by totally infallible humans. Oh, okay, fine. Now, Prof Metcalf, I was with you to that last now part. You're that now, you're, yeah, now you're just, now you're just. Now you're just silly. But no, it's a great point, right? Like yeah, the algorithm itself could be the problem because it was coded wrong, which would be a human error. Good or insight. Or designed so. with, with uh, you know, with a differing set of uh, conditions than what it was applied to. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, as we wrap up this last live show of 2018, we cannot stop without checking in with Len Peralta, who's been drying up a storm. Len? Yes, you, you know, what this you is a very special day um, because it is the, the final live show of 2018. So I wanted to do something that talked about one of the biggest stories of this week. And please bear with me because I realize that the glitter bomb in this case uh, would make us the thieves in this scenario. But I want you to think about it as 2018 being the glitter bomb latent fart spray thing that has gone off in all of our faces, our collective faces, and uh, kind of... At, at least for me personally, maybe you had a better year, uh, but uh, you know I am over this year and ready to go into 2019 to uh, to celebrate and uh, and have a, a much better year than this year. Uh, so uh, so yeah, so uh, away with the 2018 glitter bomb fart spray and uh, <laughs> onward. So uh, onward. Uh, I, to a less glittery, non-farty 2019. A non-stink bomb. As you were trying to steal the promise of 2018, it exploded in your face is what you're saying. Exa that is, that's a much better way of saying it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Much better. Uh, in addition to this, I also wanted to do something special for uh, DTNS listeners and DTNS as uh, Tom and crew move into the fifth year anniversary. If you're on the video stream, you want to, may want to check it out. Uh, uh, I've created this, which is a special Whoa. thing for DTNS five years. Five oh years of DTNS. Oh my gosh, I want that on every shirt, every hat, <laughs> every beanie. Every that sweater. is awesome. Uh, it's DTNS so cool. With a big V for Roman numeral five. Uh, design input from Roger Chang here on this, by the way, we yes. should acknowledge. Yes. Uh, great execution. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, definitely uh, check this out. And what I'm going to do with Lens Art is use it to try out a, a beta program through Patreon that will start in January, where if you remain a Patreon at a certain tier for three months, you'll get rewarded with a free mug or poster or sticker, depending on the tier. More details to come on that. Uh, but if you are at a tier and you want to hang out, this is a good time uh, to hang out because because this will be launching a, as soon as I can get this this amazing art uploaded yes. and in the system. This is, this it, is great. It, you may be getting it immediately after the show, Tom. So that's, you know, you'll be very excited. I will upload it excited. immediately after the show. And then it's just a matter of how long it takes their system uh, to launch because <laughs> this is fantastic gonna be great thank you. happy thank five you. years by the way congratulations hey, thank you thank you for being with me for the for the five years you're, you're the best oh it's nice to be here i'm glad to be here on fridays it makes my fridays uh, a little bit brighter thank you and uh if you want the glitter poster check out lenperaltastore.com please do please do folks that's all we got thank you for supporting us throughout the year however you support us dailytechnewsshow.com slash support again if you want the cool art on some cool merch uh, stay tuned to patreon.com slash dtns hey on our week off we're still going to be reading your emails so send them to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com we're also live monday through friday once we start up in the new year at 4 30 p.m eastern 21 30 utc and you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live next week we got special episodes predictions the results of last year's predictions listener co-host and a retro episode coming up on monday have a happy new year folks we'll talk to you in 2019 this show is part of the frog pants network get more at frogpants.com diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program <laughs> <laughs>
We, we did it. We did it. <sighs> Another year in the books. Crazy, man. Can't believe we did it. it. We did it. We did I think it. I might have been on the on the first show you did. I don't know about that or not. Well, Were you on with Tim Stevens? I was no, I was on with I was on with Darren. Okay, so I think you were on the first Friday. First Friday, yeah. Crazy mm -hmm. man. All right, I'm going to I'm going to get this to you here, Tom. Awesome. Actually, let me turn off. That's so screen. good. Uh, great team effort. Oh yeah, excellent. A great idea it's, too. It's what so nice. Idea? It's really cool. It's very cool. Yeah. So the so the a uh, few more details. Uh, Patreon has a merch program and the idea is to reward patrons who stick around. So once it launches, the clock starts ticking. Uh, let's say there's the, the master tier is probably going to get the mug. And if, so if you're at the master tier and you stay at the master tier for three months from, from the time the thing goes in, or if you upgrade to the master tier three months from the time you upgrade, uh, then at that three months, you'll get shipped a mug with lens art on it. That's awesome. That's great. And thanks to Len for doing that for us. Yeah, it's great. Thank to Roger it is great. for the inspiration there. That's fantastic. So W. Scott S. One says Len was on the second episode of DTNS with wow. Wow. You are Nuts. you are an old timer. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember that. That was uh uh the wow man, now I forget the name of the of the um robot I drew. Oh, the, the, not the prediction bot. Um, no. Wally. Oh, no. Um, the Walmart have ears. Get it? The walls have ears. Oh, uh, yeah. The Walmarts have ears. That could work. Um, glitter busted. Mm, sad mm. but true. <laughs> I drew Quanto, Quanto the computer. That's what yeah. It is. Quanto. Quanto smash. <laughs> Apple bends the truth, but that was more of an email reply. There was one glitter busted I thought was kind of a fun one. You yeah. like that one too? Glitter I busted. Like that, that was um, sad but true is what I said about that one. Sad but true. Yeah. And it fits the art. Art. Yeah, you know that that guy I think got the raw deal because everybody now thinks that he's the faker. But he's not the faker. It's the people he he asked. Yeah, to he's getting to he's getting tagged with the the sort of like I'm not going to think about it too hard. Uh, if something is fake, then the whole thing's fake. Done. Yeah, it's not. It's I mean he he built the thing right. It does what it's supposed to do. Roger, can I take over the post? Uh, yes. Am I still okay. in it? Yeah, for some reason it thinks you are. Oh yeah, hold on. Maybe no worries. Uh, All right, uh, glitter busted. Glitter busted. I like that one. Who are you gonna call? Glitter busted. Something strange. In the package on your porch. <laughs> it smells like a fart. <laughs> what you gonna do? Glitter busted. <laughs> Have you gone back any recently to watch like the Ghostbusters video from 1984 and to see the celebrities who are in there? Not recently, no. <laughs> so, so like uh, um, Al Franken is in it, Al pre Senator Franken. Al Franken. All right. Um, well, was he a celebrity at the time? He was. Yeah, pre, he was comedian. pre Senate. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes. no, he was a, he was a comedian. Okay. Yeah, he was yeah. on uh, Saturday Night Live. Yep. Yeah, he, he did the uh, Jack Handy. Remember? He was that wasn't Fox. him. Oh, no, no, no. He did. Oh, no, no, no. He Stuart wasn't Jack Smalley. Handy. Stuart Smalley. He was Stuart Smalley. Yes. Smalley. Right. Okay. Okay. Got it. No, but I, also, I yeah. thought he wrote Jack Handy. Might have written it. Yeah. That could be. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Handy was I mean, also nobody played great. Jack Handy. It was just inspirational was the, quotes. That was the voiceover. Yeah. That was his voice. Oh, yeah. Okay. George Went is in that. Terry Garr. Isn't it Terry Gar? Wow. I know. Isn't what is Terry Gar doing right now? That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. Danny DeVito. I didn't remember Rio Danny DeVito being in that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I know it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, Terry, Terry. 
my goodness. So they got all uh, their friends. So. Yeah, it was Harold Ramis. I don't know. Did you know? Uh, by the way, did you guys have you have you heard anything about this movie, uh, Christmas Chronicles, with Kurt Russell? Have you guys talked oh, about that? Oh, uh, Eileen has 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 uh, put it on her possible list. Uh, Christmas it's, Prince uh, sequel is first, though. Okay, no, Christmas Chronicles is great. Okay, it is, I you know watching the trailer for it, I was like, there's no way I want to watch this, but I heard enough good things about it. I turned it on. We watched it really? last Friday. So cheesy yeah. great or great great? It, great great. Like like Kurt Russell is amazing as Santa Claus. Wow. And All right. it's just it's it's funny. It doesn't go into the snarky world like you expect there's going to be two teenage kids there's going to be snark. None of that. It's actually they they're very earnest and um it it kept Nora's attention. That says a lot cuz she does mm -hmm. not stick around for anything that is not like you know like interesting but uh but it was it was good i highly recommend it i'm gonna watch it again it has it has cl it has classic sort of penciled into it i think it's All very right. good so i would All recommend right. you guys if you're looking for any kind of holiday christmas movie to get you know a new one kurt russell's christmas chronicles is for well, real i might wow. get into that wouldn't have yeah, yeah for sure you, and and you know what if you do watch it uh, at me on Twitter. Let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, even if you hate it, I'm so okay not don't at me, but at me, bro. Yeah. At me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I were just talking, sent you that file, by the way, Tom, we were talking just okay. yesterday about, um, you know, Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie? Is it not? Eh. But I would, I would, I would be happy to have something else to watch that I kind of do every year. The Godfather yeah. is kind of my holiday thing. Really? Um, Christmas story is ours. But I already yeah. did that over Thanksgiving. So I'm like, yeah, I want to watch something that's not like super cheesy. Yeah. It would love Christmas story is definite watch. Nice. It's a wonderful life. I try to watch that. Well, I always throw uh, Die Hard on while we're like doing stuff. Does anybody watch Scrooged? No, I, I liked it back in its day though. Mm. It doesn't really age well. No, I guess I, mean, I, I Bill see. Murray. If you love Bill Murray, then it's the movie for you. I always I confused like it, it with Albert Finney's Scrooge the Musical. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> December the twenty fifth, me days December the twenty fifth. Yeah, you know, uh, if Eileen watches it, let me know what she thinks. Okay, yeah. No, I'll have her ask along the powerful recommendation. We are definitely watching uh, A Christmas Prince, the sequel. A uh, Christmas Prince, A Royal Wedding, I believe. is what it's Ooh, What's that? Is that Netflix? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Christmas Prince was Netflix's surprise smash cheese hit last, last holiday season. And oh. we're back again. Who's in it? No one you know. No one you know? I, uh, I, um, what about Christmas shoes? You got to listen. <laughs> Don't Christmas shoes. No. I forgot about Christmas shoes. <laughs> Wow. It's terrible. Don't uh, even listen to that song. I got yelled uh, at last last weekend. We we're decorating. I put Christmas shoes on, and people were like, "Would you get the hell out of here with that?" What about "Deck the Halls" with Boston Charlie? Oh, you know, That's... while we're talking about awful Christmas songs, uh, one of the ones that I really dislike, and there might be people out there who are fans of it, and I am personally not. Um. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Sorry. Well, I, I don't hate it. Before. I've never hated it. I, don't I mean, I don't like, I'm, I'm not thrilled about the song, but I don't hate it the way that I hate I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, <laughs> which I actually do hate. <laughs> Wonderful Christmas Time by um, Paul McCartney. I guess and I again, like. that's very polarizing. I don't hate that song, but a lot of people do. I yeah, think it's kind of catchy. Uh, Barbara Streisand's uh, version of Jingle Bells, bad. <laughs> and then listening to "Do They Know It's Christmas?" Now that didn't really. You know. See, I like that one too. All right, <laughs> when I when I when I always think of Mannheim Steamroller because they used to play like the heck out of that guy's music, like all through the '80s on the UHF channels to fill airtime. Yeah. Do they know it's Christmas? No, because many of them are Muslim or some other religion. <laughs> thank God it's them instead <laughs> also, of you. Oh, yeah, thank yeah, God it's them. really Ooh. bad. Thing to to say. Say. <laughs> Be I lucky you're like not like them. The tune, uh, but if you think about the words too closely. It, yeah. yeah. 
The clanging oh. chimes of doom. <laughs> The Maybe bitters. I didn't listen to the song to that closely. My goodness. Oh, I'm sorry. Fred in the uh, chat room says he loves Streisand's Jingle Bells. I'm sorry. I just I can't get into that one. Jingle bells. Jingle bells. It's very offbeat, huh? I don't. I like the Ronettes rocking around the Christmas tree. That's good. Oh, Run DMC. That's a good one. Yeah. Run DMC. Christmas and Hollis. Good song. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, at the beginning of Die Hard. Thank you very much for those of you who resist the idea that Die Hard should be played around the holidays. Perhaps. Run DMC song is in the front of that. The, yeah, uh, is it? I think it's Run DMC. Yeah. Descending into madness. <laughs> yep. I'm excited. Right. It doesn't feel like Christmas here <laughs> the, at all. The Friday before. Why? Is it not cold? It's no, it's, is it, oh, no, it's raining. It's, it's raining yeah. here. Um, and, you know, it just doesn't feel like Christmas. So I'm looking forward to. It doesn't well, feel like Christmas in my neighborhood as well. I mean, lots of people have. No, it's Christmas time at all. Do, 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 rain do, 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 to snow for less to you. Know. <laughs> We're selling this music to people who are who are already kind of taken care of, uh, but it makes us feel better. That was no, the start of I mean, that part. They were selling the uh, the song in order to raise money to give to the people who deserve it. So, this yeah. was, <laughs> I, I if if I have my history right, it uh, preceded Live Aid by a few yes. months. Right. Yes. It was. So this was, it was actually the first the sort of like impetus. a bunch of people get together and sing a song and raise money for a good yeah. cause, and then Live it Aid was, was. It was the impetus for Live Aid because yeah. uh, because it was Bob Geldof who then got with Quincy Jones to do USA for Africa, and then Live Aid in the summer. We are the world. So, yeah. Followed on from that. Yeah, yeah, we are the world. Was yeah. USA for Africa right? Yeah. And then my favorite is Hearing Aid, which was all the metal bands. That did wear stars. That's mm. my favorite. <laughs> There's Farm Aid. Right? Farm Aid, right? Oh, Willie Nelson. Oh gosh, that's right. Farm Aid. Comic Relief was sort of a thing that came out of that too as well. Bob Geldof realized, no, they don't know it's Christmas. Maybe I should do something else to help them. <laughs> well, by the way, a lot of that money did not even make it to where it needed to go. Well, that, well that's... Shocker. That, I mean, that's... Well, but that's the criticism of, of, of events shocker. like that is that they tend to be more... Show yeah. than go. Well, and, and you could say that about lots of nonprofits. Is like, or, well, that's okay, that's a heavy criticism yeah. against a lot of NGOs. Is because so never give any money to anyone. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Such a black and white world Leave your for money you, Tom. Under your mattress. <laughs> that's the way to be. Into this wonderful market we have right now. Well, and, no, um, the, the idea is that Patreon. <laughs> you know, it's, it's part of it was part. like you know. Eh. <laughs> You know, we if, are if, the patrons. We are the patrons. We are the patron. Patron. Roger was trying to make a serious point. I'm no, sorry. I don't need to make it anymore. No, I no, don't please, was, please, though. please. We're I we're forgot. just being annoying. At the <laughs> In the holiday spirit. Oh, uh, a choice you make it. Sorry. Okay, <clears throat> I'm done. I want to make a choice between a salad or a soup. <laughs> Choose a salad or a soup. Feed Roger. Hey, that would be awesome. Do they know it's Friday? Menu items. Feed Roger Chang. <laughs> well, now that I'm sure that our performances have uh, have definitely <laughs> set off every YouTube uh, filter possible, we're going to have to <laughs> leave the video and move to audio. Thank you for <laughs> watching. Uh, happy New Year. Uh, happy Holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Festivus. And uh, we will see you in the New Year. Happy Holidays. Well. Bye. Bye. There's more of this to go. Bye, my.